She's a beauty. We're going to change things up a little bit. We like to focus a lot on those higher powered sleds, all the modifications and all that, but today we're going to keep it real. We're going old school. We're going to take this old 71 Elan and restore it. We're going to go over the thing from top to bottom. I'm going to show you how to do everything on one of these little old girls. Take the track out, chain case out, do a top end. We're going to get the whole chassis powder coated. It's going to be a pretty cool build, so make sure you stay tuned and you don't want to miss this. Yes! That's awesome! Get this old hood off of here. Now this is a 71 Elan. I just got it this summer. Got it pretty cheap actually. I think I paid about 200 bucks for it. Two, three hundred dollars. It's all original, other than the seat. They just had that redone last year. But everything on this looks pretty darn good. The frame's nice and straight, just a little bit of rust. It's gonna be pretty easy to clean up. Now with these 71s, the chassis is actually about 25 pounds lighter than the 72s and up, just because they use a little less metal. You gotta watch that they're not all bent up. Now when I take this apart, I might reinforce a couple things here and there, but for the most part, I like it nice and light. The kids have a lot more fun on it. Now you gotta be careful with this throttle cable. You don't wanna wreck this too badly because you can't get these anymore. Not that I can find anyway. So you're gonna have to reuse it. You don't wanna wreck it. That's pretty easy getting that cable out. There are two little 7 16 nuts holding a U-bolt on here. Make sure you use a little magnetic tray. Put all these nuts and bolts in it. You're going to want to keep everything. Replace it with some nice new hardware. But you're going to need your old ones to figure out what it is you have to buy at the hardware store. That's the little U-bolt right there. Now there's a little roller pin here in the bottom of this steering column. You just gotta punch that out, but to make life easier, I think I'll pop out this fuel can or the gas tank first. Now what happens with these old girls? They take a real beating on the front end. Guys are hitting stumps and rocks. This one's not too bad underneath, but it took a good hit right here. As you can see, the bumper's actually gone. When it takes the hit there, crimps in the gas tank, just makes it a little harder to get out. So you're going to have to use a little gentle persuasion. There we go. Now this old fuel tank is 41 years old. Gas has been sitting in there probably its whole life. This old plastic just starts to dry out. You can see somebody's repaired it already. We're going to put a new one in here. This one's just not going to make it. Now that I have that fuel tank out, I can pop this pin out that's holding the steering column in. Now I can get this cotter pin out that holds on this steering column. Now in 72 they changed these things up a lot. They started using little tie rod ends, the ball joints kind of thing. In 71 they were pretty simple with this design. And as you can see it lasted. Get out of there. Uh, we'll just finish getting that column out. Right, that should come off there. Get this brake off. Pretty simple, this old brake setup. They just more or less wrapped the cable around this brake lever tied it up with a bunch of knots. 
again, you know, you don't want to wreck this when you're taking this apart. A lot of these pieces, you're going to have to reuse. So you want to be gentle with them. I got my first land when I was six or seven years old in 1976. Woke up Christmas morning and Dad had a brand new shiny. Well, it was actually a Moto Ski Spirit, which is the same as a land, right? With a different hood on it, basically. I guess Bombardier licensed or granted license to Moto Ski to produce that and a few other different models, which was pretty cool. So I had that Moto Ski Spirit and I drove that thing for years. It was a riot. So I never really stopped liking these old machines. Fond memories of dad pouring gas in the carburetor trying to get it started every year. Good old days, good old times. I'm going to leave that on there. I'm just pull that right out now. There we go. Now before we started any of this, we put some good old lubricant penetrating oil on just about every nut and bolt on this machine. Let it sit overnight. Just gonna make everything pretty easy, hopefully, to come apart. Get that wiring harness off. Now we have a brand new wiring harness reproduction from Goose. Good old Ron Thompson there, uh, Goose Reproductions. Amazing little parts and pieces. We have a new seat to go on as well. We'll get this decompressor off. I'll show you how to do that. Come on over here. Now if you don't know what a decompressor is, it basically just opens up a little channel in your cylinder releases a little bit of that compression that you have in there when you're trying to pull it over, makes it easier for the kids to start it. Now most of these are seized by this time, but this one actually works, so come on over here and check this out. There we go. Pop that out. Pop that out. There we go. I'm just gonna pop this belt off. Just take your secondary sheaves, split them. Whoopsie. And just sort of pull it over the outside here. There you go. Now that's ready to come out. go. Still runs. Just pry that up a little bit. You can get your hoses and everything out of here. Now, these are pretty simple, these old 71s. Wiring is very simple. There's no brake light on it. Very, very simple system. A couple of wires and that's it. So there is a, a running light, but no brake light on this. So we'll pop out this chain case now. We're going to loosen up this secondary clutch, pop it out, uh, this stationary bracket here. We'll get rid of that. Pretty easy to do. They made these things to be put together pretty quickly, I guess. The manufacturing process was a lot simpler back then, I don't want to than it is today. And I've literally pulled these apart on the trail, pretty much rebuilt the whole thing from the ground up. Steering shafts and motor replacements right on the trail. Sometimes it's just to say that we did it. It's pretty fun. I gotta use the universal to get in here with this one that's underneath the clutch. Make sure you put your safety goggles on when doing this one. That just takes out that chain case retaining bracket, U-bolt type of deal. Make sure that any spacers that come along with that, you gotta keep those, you gotta replace those back in here. Cause it sets up your, see in behind here, there's a shim. There's actually two shims. You gotta make sure you use those again. Or it'll misalign your clutches. I'm gonna take out that secondary clutch because I gotta get the chain case 
out of this machine. I need to undo this here anyway, so it's going to be pretty easy to do actually. Get that nut out of here. You know what? I don't know how much oil is in here. Before I loosen everything off here and pop that out, I'm just going to use my little Liquivac, see if there's any gear oil in there and get that out. Now I figured this might happen. I'm not pulling any gear oil out of there. And that's probably because that bottom seal at the chain case is dried up, cracked, all that old gear oil is leaked out onto the ground. And that happens very often. That's an old seal in there. Now you're going to lose all the fluid, you're going to seize up your bearing, you're going to screw up your shaft. It's not a good thing. But I have a fix for that, and I'm going to show you what to do when I put everything back together. Make sure you don't lose all these little parts here. And just looking at this bearing here, it's actually not in bad shape, but there's really no oil on there. Now's the time to look at your gears. If anything's stripped or cracked, you know you're going to have to get new ones. Uh, just to be on the safe side, I'm going to put this little blue rag here. I'm going to pop out this bottom grommet. And as I suspected, there's no gear oil in there at all. Now, it's a good thing I just didn't get this sled going this year, started driving it. If I didn't check that oil, didn't check that gear oil, we would have had some major problems. All right. Now there's a little chain tensioner in here. I'm going to pop that out while I can. It's spring loaded, so you got to make sure when you pull it out, it just doesn't flip around and fall down inside your chain case. It's going to be a little more difficult to get everything out of there. Like what just happened to me. Now before I can get that chain case out, I got to get the bogies out. I have to loosen everything up. Before you loosen off these adjusters at the back, you need to undo these little nuts. Now these might snap on you. That's okay. New ones are available from Kimpex. Actually, a lot of these parts are available from Kimpex. Springs. But I believe they have these little kits. And you're going to need them because these are, these are pretty darn old. Now just release the spring pressure on here. Your little springs come out. Now with these older Elans, what I usually do is, I don't use the Elan spring, I use the newer Olympic type spring. They're a little, a little more beefy, they last a little longer, because these ones have a tendency to break. I'm gonna pop these bogies out. Now if you have a problem with these, these can be tricky. Loosen up one side, tighten it up, loosen it up again, switch to the other side, tighten things up, move them back and forth a few times, then it'll come out for you. If you're trying to do it with your hand or with a wrench or with a small ratchet, it's a little tricky. If you can use a power tool, that's the best way to do it, or an air ratchet is even better. That one. There we go. Sometimes that happens. Now the shaft is spinning inside there. So what I'm gonna do is, let me see if I can tighten it. No, I'll come over here. So I've gone over to the other side. I've tightened it up really nice and tight. I'm gonna try to back this off now. Now this one wants to come out. So I'll pop that right out. That other side should just come out, no problem. There we go, so we got it. Sometimes those can be really tricky and drive you nuts. You don't want to have to cut them off. It's a bit of a pain in the butt. So if you do that exercise where you're working back and forth a few times, you're good to go. All right, let's get that track out. Now before you can move that axle, there's an axle cup on the side of the tunnel right here. It's got three little bolts holding it in. You need to take that out. Can't get the ratchet on this. A little tighter in here. So from start to finish, complete tear down without doing the motor in 45 minutes with the camera work. Not too bad. I think I've only done that about 15 or 20 times with these Alans. 
I've got this retainer cup in here. These usually get a little tricky. This one's actually coming out. Well, right on. Now what happens is there's a seal in there because the shafts on these are hollow. So the chain case oil goes right through the shaft and oils up this bearing in here. So that seal gets really tight in there. Let me see if I can, yeah, that's what's happened. That old seal's rock solid. So that's holding the bearing in and everything inside this cup. There's a little retaining bracket on this chain case. It bolts into the tunnel in the back side. It's hard to see, but here's the, that's the bracket right here. The chain case really isn't gonna move very much until you get that out. It's a 13 millimeter socket or a half inch socket. I'm just using the wrench because I can get in behind on it. Now there's a cotter pin holding on that main shaft, the uh, drive axle. You gotta get that out before you can do anything. And it is a tricky spot to get into. It's even trickier to get back into position. That's hard to show you here on camera. I just take it and twist it out. It's garbage anyway. After that, now when you're gonna put it back in, I usually kind of curve it just slightly. It fits right in there, no problem. Good. Get these bogies out of here. Right, I don't care about that last part. And I'll take it off the stand. I left these skis on because it's holding everything the way I want it to. Remember I told you about that seal you might be able to shine the camera up from in here and you'll see that in there. Right there. Yeah, that's it. Now that seal's rock hard and there's a little lip that it's recessed into. So we need to get that out. And this here is how I do it. I put everything on its side. So you can see that that seal popped out. Pretty easy. And there's my cup. Now for the other side, I just make sure that the shaft is inside the hole and, and when you're doing that you have to make sure that the cogs of the uh, axle shaft here aren't stuck in the track. That's it. Now with these old type of drivers, this plastic gets really brittle and it starts to break on you. You'll be driving down the trail one day and these will strip right out. So we're gonna replace those, replace this bearing, which is still pretty good. Not too bad, it's coming along. I'll track it here. The chain case comes right out. Just spread it away from the gear. That's it. That gear's pretty good. Unless I know that this chain has, has been replaced recently, I always replace these. Never reuse a chain on a 40-year-old snowmobile. You're just looking for problems. These, these have been stretched out. The rollers are probably cracked. Maybe the links are cracked. And you don't want to just do a restoration, have the chain break, and then box up inside your case. That's not a good thing. That's it, now we just have to get the skis off. Now we're gonna pop these old loopless skis. I don't know if anybody's ever seen these before. No loops on here, kinda hard to grab on, but pretty funny old things. But I gotta get these ski spindles out. They're attached to these arms. And the way they're attached is at the very top of the spindle, there's, it's kinda like a, a teepee or a conical type shape and they're splined, but they're almost pressed on or they kinda seize up a little bit. The only way I can fix that is with this. I've got this retaining bolt threaded in most of the way. It's kind of a high strength bolt that they used way back in the day. If you have it out too far and you hit it, you're gonna mar up the threads on it. So keep it pretty tight and close. That's it. You can see how this is made See what I mean? It's all splined. 
kind of tapered, if you will, conical, I'm not sure what you want to call it. But that's it. And finally, all I have to do is take that seed off. Very easy. Somebody's just recovered this seat recently. So that works out very well. And that's it. And like always, this seat foam is full of water and weighs about 50 pounds. So that's it, about 45 minutes, an hour, complete teardown of this nice little old 1971 Elan. It's gonna be fun to rebuild this. This is probably one of about, I don't know how many videos are gonna go in this series, maybe 15 or 20. It's gonna be a lot of fun. It's gonna be nice to watch the kids having fun and driving this this winter as well. I'm gonna use some oil eater products. I'm gonna clean this all up, degrease it, prep it, fix up the hinge here, it's kind of messed up, and then off to Ottawa powder coating. We're gonna do a complete powder coat on this and we're gonna show you how it's done. That's gonna be pretty cool. So thanks for coming back and watching us here at Power Mods. I'm Louis Skibo.